Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Melissa and I'm always here on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Friday and I do upload every other Sunday. Um, on these days, I talk about true crime, missing children, and also different important topics that we don't talk about. If you're new here and you like all that, go ahead and subscribe and hit that bell so you can be notified every time I upload a new video. So today is Monday, so I am coming up with it. I am talking about a new case. I am going to be talking about someone that got, um, was put on death row and got executed and sad part was that he was innocent so yes and i'm sorry about about this look right now but i just woke up from a nap i haven't been feeling good i'm waiting for my glasses i don't know if y'all have seen me but so my couple of videos i've been wearing my glasses so i'll order some new ones hopefully they get here soon so with that being said i like to start my videos with poems so let's go ahead and do that first so today says you call it revenge i call it returning a favor and that is the poem of today so like i said we are going to be talking about somebody that was um put on death road and they he got executed and he was proven innocent after all these years and i like talking about these type of cases because there's still more cases like these are and still happening these type of things are still happening today if y'all see my melissa lucio case that one is one that i had talked about and i actually was going to talk about it um i think later in the long run but i wanted to get it out there because she is going to i'm hoping that you know the judge and everything we get more information her attorney is supposed to talk to everybody today i think her family spending time with her as well um kim kardashian um it's involved um I heard Amanda, I think it was, that's her name, I may be wrong, Amanda, it was a girl that com got convicted of killing her roommate, um, but I guess she was proven not guilty, um, she's involved as well, there's just a lot of people involved trying to help this woman get a new trial, because her, her new attorneys are saying that they have found evidence that this, that she did not commit this crime, so I'm hoping to hear, to get, you know, I'm, I'm really keeping up undated on this one i usually never keep updates on any crime um it just depends on the crime but this one is the one that i'm really keeping updated and hopefully she gets a new trial and gets a second chance to for people to hear the evidence and it's it's crazy because also the jurors that were in her and her trial they're spending time with her and every single one of them are changing their minds and saying that they they did not they feel like they feel like when her first trial started, they felt like they didn't have a lot of evidence and they felt like they were being pushed to convict her. So yeah, that's, that's I've never heard that happen before. So that's amazing that even the juries believe she needs a new trial. So hopefully we'll hear good news later. Um, yeah, so let me go ahead and get on with the video. So we're gonna be talking about um, Ruben Canton, Ruben, Anton was born December 5th, 1966, and was and died in August 24th, 1933. Was a Texan who executed for a murder committed when he was 17 years old. During the years following the conviction, the surviving victim, the co-defendant, the district attorney, and the juror for four women have been public statement that cast doubt on Anton's guilty verdict. Ruben Cantun grew up with his mother and father until the age of 14 when the couple split up. With Ruben's mother moving 20 miles away and Ruben and his father counting to live in a trailer in a crime raiding South San Antonio Barrio. The neighborhood was, was home to loose band of tough kids called the Great Eagles, of which Cantun became a leader despite his being rather small and a special aid class at school. By age 15, he was stealing cars from organization auto that ring often spending days at time driving stolen cars to Mexico for cash. At a time when the San Antonio Police Department was in Berlin in scandals the, with Valentins and drug stealing officers well known to the community, Cantu was stealing cars and dodging the police. His older brother had been arrested on drugs and theft charge, but despite several runs in with the police, Ruben never was convicted of anything before the November 1984 crime that led to his execution. 
The prosecution case of the trial that convicted Ruben Cantu is summarized as follows. On the night of November 8th of 1984, approximately 11.30 p.m., Ruben Cantu, age 17 at the time, and his friends David Garza, 15, broke into a vacant San Antonio house under construction at 605 Brick Street and robbed two Hispanic males at gunpoint. The two victims, Pedro Gomez, 25 or 35, and one, Maro, 19, had been woken sleeping in floor mattress at the construction site, guarding against burglary, as the water heater had been recently stolen from the work site. The two victims were sleeping in their work clothes with their pockets full of their cash earnings at the time of the robbery. Cantu and Garza were carrying a rifle, which they used to rob the two men of their uh, wristwatch. As they tried to take their... Sorry guys, there's a damn mosquito in my room. Which they used to rob the two men. As they tried to take their cash, they were interrupted by Gomez's attempt to retrieve pistol hidden under the, his mattress. Gomez was shot at least nine times by the boy's raffle, dying instantly, and Romer was also shot as many as many as nine times by the same rifle. Thinking they had killed both men, the two teens then flew the scene. Juan Moreno survived the attack and was able to leave the house and call for help. Shortly after this event, they thought he lost one lung and kidney and part of his stomach. Short on leads, other than Maroon's discretion of two Latinos aged roughly 14 and 19, a neighborhood beat a neighborhood B officer passed along a rumor from the halls of South Antonio High School where Cantu Witt was in the ninth grade. A shop, a shop teacher reported that the three kids had been involved in the robbery and murder and that students were saying Cantu had done the killing. Questioning just before his arrest, Garza defined Cantu saying he saw Ruben coming out of the house according to the detective note. The key trial witness, however, was Juan Moreno, the shooting surviving, who would repeatedly identify Ruben Cantu in court. A decade after Cantu was executed, Murrell Resen recanted his story as he did as his history as did Garza. According to Juan Moreno, and consisting with the police record records, he was visit he was visited by police in the hospital the day after the shooting. But due to surgery of his wounds, he was unable to speak and could barely move. Five days later, in second interview, Moreno was shown a number of photos. Cantun's photo was not not included, and Moreno did not define any of the people shown in the photo. On December 16, detectives visited Moreno a third time and showed him the other area of five photos, including one of Ruben Cantun, who lived across the street from Moreno's job site and where he the crime. Her. He did not define Lee Rubin or anyone else from the photo showing him doing to police in an interview. The case went cold and now suspect of the rest. About four months after the, the robbery murder, Cantun shot Joe de la Luz in an effort to off duty plainclothes police officer at the Scabro Leguina bar near Cantun's home. According to Cantun, the officer threatened him to reveal his concealed weapon provoking Cantun, who was, um, who was also armed, to fire the La Luz, who he did not know was a police officer. According to the La Luz, he was shot four times by Cantun despite no provocation. The case against Cantun for the barroom shooting had, the, had to be dropped as the police had legally searched Cantun's home, rendering his, the case unprescriptable. Officer de la Luz survived the shooting and a friend of his who worked the homicide, Sergeant Bill Well, decided to immediately reopen the murder investigation against Ruben Cantun. On the following day, Sergeant Well sent an investigator to Juan Moreno for fourth time, this time showing Cantun's photo along with four other other. Again, Juan Moreno did not define Cantun as one of his attackers, but he did provide Cantun's name. One day later, the third homicide detective picked up Moreno, an undocumented immigrant from Mexico at the time, drove him to the police station, set him down, and showed him the same group of photos that includes Cantu. On the third attempt, Moreno possibly defined the photo of Cantu as being one of his attackers. 
Ye years later, Moreno said that the person who shot him had very curly hair and that he was never shown a photo of the real shooter. David Garza Cantu's co-defendant has since admitted an vomit in the burglary, assault, and murder. He said he did go inside the house with another boy, did participate in the robbery, and saw the murder take place. But at the but that his accomplice was not Ruben. According to Garza, the real murder was an elementary school friend of Cantun, this person whose only criminal record is a single misdemeanor domestic assault conviction denied that he had anything to do with the robbery and murder when he was interviewed by the Houston Chronicle in 2005. Shortly after being convicted by a jury of first degree murder and sentenced, Cantun wrote a note to the people of San Antonio saying, I have been framed in a capital murder case. I was framed because I shot an off deputy, off deputy police, an officer named De His Jose, Joe de la, de la Luz, on August 24th of 1993. At two minutes, two minutes after midnight at the age of 26, Cantun died by lethal in, in tech lethal infection in fiction, becoming the fifth juvenile offender to be executed by Texas. His final request was for a piece of bubble gum which was denied as if he had at least statement he said no sir. Sam Missa was who was the district attorney presiding over the Cantun case proclaimed himself as a lifelong supporter of the death penalty and his community published the in San Antonio's Press News in 2000. In December 2005, interview with the Press News, Miss Melispa expressed a newfound opposition to capital punishment. In 2005, a story Melispa, an attorney and provide practice at the time of the interview, said his decision to oppose the death penalty was affirmed as evidence suff suffers that Ruben Cantu was very likely innocent when prosecuted by Phil's office. The unlimited executed by the state of Texas according to 2005 expert news story. It is troubling to me personally. No decision is more frightening than seeking the death penalty. We owe ourselves certainty on it. He had the degree of a cert cert certainty in the 1980s when he was the district attorney. When I was in my 30s and knew not everything now he says there is no way to have that kind of certain. He won. He won. He went on to say that if Cantun was innocent, that means the person who committed the murder remains free, and this is this is misconduct by police office could be addressed today. Baxter County, San Antonio District Attorney Susan Reed indicated to Rick Casey of the Houston Chronicle that she may bring a murder by perjury charge against Moreno, the surviving victim of the robbery shooting and key prostitution witness. Juan Mero is currently a building contractor living in East San Antonio with a teenage child of his own. In 2006, Reese said that she was deeply spectacle of someone who rested in testimony that gave 20 years privately but agreed that Cantushina had been prosecuted as a death penalty case. In 2007, Reed issued a reporting finding that Ruben Cantu was guilty of the crime for which Texas executed him in 1993. However, critics said that the report is compromised by the fact Reed was the judge who rejected Cantu's appeal in 1988 and set his execution date in 1993. Reed assigned to the Cantu case to investigator Mike Brees and James Moreno, who illegally was recorded ridiculing the case in phone conversation and open openly mocking the nation that Cantume had been innocent. And that is the story of Ruben Cantum. And this is and this is one and I like always telling I always at the end of my videos I like um letting y'all know how I feel about this type of cases. And in this case they did the wrong they should have never put a seventeen year old on death row and this is why. When you're 17 or younger, your brain is not, and y'all y'all probably have heard this in, in kids' cases. When you're 17 or younger, your your brain is not as developed as an adult brain. I am not saying that he didn't know the difference between wrong and right. I he I, he probably did know, but you are putting a 17 year old in death row does not make any sense to you because to, to be honest with me it did not make no sense 
you cannot put a child i don't care if he's 27 when you killed this innocent man this innocent young boy he should have not, never been in the death penalty he sh it shouldn't have not been and the fact that the same person the surviving victim kept telling you it's not him this man this other the other um shooter had curly hair ruben didn't have curly hair but what i have learned about researching any type of case is that there is some detectives out there that are lazy i'm sorry i'm gonna say it i'm not saying every single cop and any i'm not i'm not saying that all detectives are lazy i'm not saying that all um cops are lazy there is some detectives that are lazy and do not want to do their job and they just want to solve it and get over and get over and go to the next case and that does not work like that and i think what does and i think texas is i've read that texas has killed more people on death that put people on death row and kill more people on death row than any state in america that's sad that is sad this boy was innocent and y'all kept trying to tell the victim that tried i don't know it seemed to me like y'all was just pushing him to say that it was him because y'all didn't want to do the job right a father a brother a mother lost their child because y'all did not want to do their job y'all didn't want to do the job and now he's gone now he can't grow up he can't be a dad you never know he could have probably changed his life because that's like i said when you are 17 and under your brain is not developed as an adult brain yes do you know the difference between the right and wrong obviously we all do some of us don't care but your brain is not developed as as an adult is and it's just it sucks that this young man lost his his job his life for something that he did not do i mean yes he did say that he did shoot an officer and i don't know but i mean was he being punished for it and he got framed because he was shot an officer you never know you never know but i just feel bad for him and i hope that his family you know is is okay and doing okay especially his mom and his dad and his brother and knowing that his brother that th their loved one was innocent this whole time so guys i will see you on wednesday with a new video you have a good day